start with uh, this um, new has to webinar series I wanted to introduce you in hypermesh uh, parts so parts are not really new entities they are there in hypermesh from version uh, 14 or 17 but um, we were bringing we have brought from this first version several improvements which make the parts currently really efficient and uh, eventually they will replace components. So what is the difference between components and parts? So if you look at the part browser right now, the parts are, 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 or the components are stored below the part. And parts are better designed for handling PLM data. If you're dealing with PLM, you will get parts automatically and it better handles the metadata. Also, one component could contain only one kind of, let's say, mesh and FE. In the parts, you can have as much FE representation and CAD representation that, that you want. So this is something that I will try to show you in the, in the next demonstration. And to start with, um, to show what gain you can have dealing with parts, let me start by using this match feature here on top. And let me select the different parts of my model. And this match capability will find similar parts. So I'm comparing here all, it can be CAD, CAD only, FE or FE only. And I'm using the <coughs> chip AI encoding here in order to look for the similar parts. There are some other method which are available, but this is the one which I will use here. And I'm looking for a 95% of similarity. And before clicking on match, I'm linking parts so that when I click on match, each similar parts create an instance or are stored as instance. So let me run this match. And you will see on the browser, then the browser will be split between two different views. So we'll keep on the right hand side the assembly view with all the parts. And on the left hand side, it will be populated with um, the list of instances that have been found by the uh, algorithm, the CHEP AI algorithm. So I think I've hidden my second view. So let's wait for the algorithm to complete. And then we'll review the different instances that have been identified by uh, Hypermesh and by the part browser. So depending on the size of your model, this step of identifying the matching parts uh, can be um, a bit time consuming because it really browses for all the model and is looking for the different uh, similar parts. So yeah, depending on how much your modeling is complex, you may leave Hypermesh running in batch mode in order to review the information. And here are the different instances that have been found by Hypermesh. So let me hide the model and just focus on some of the uh, instances that have been found. So we have these first instances which contain um, four parts. Here yeah, it is the four similar parts. So let me unzoom. Then we can see that we have some uh, cylinders. Then we have different parts. So the cylinders again, pistons. Um, Sorry, we have this, which are for the glass, and I will keep them on screen. Same for this one, and then uh, we have another, other parts instantiated. And I will try first to keep this as a first view. So let me focus first on these three instances. And what I will do is just take the first one of each. So I will isolate only. And what I will do is to first say that for this representation I want to save this representation and say that this is a CAD representation. So this will be one way to load 
uh, my part into a hypermesh as a CAD. Now, in order to mesh this as 2D mesh, I have two options here. Oh, I have multiple options. The historical one would be to go into the geometry panel in order to run the mid surface, and then to go in the mesh in order to run the general 2D mesh. Now, instead of this, let me keep, stay in the uh, part browser, right click, and say that for this representation, I want to create a new representation in addition of the uh, CAD, and I want first a common, and uh, the common, it may be a bit tricky, but it extracts the mid surface, and you can change the method, and then I can pick the target mesh, and here I will take a crash 10 millimeter. And now let me click on OK. So what happens when I click on OK? I have the batch mesh, which is started, and which will run first a pre-run procedure, then it will go for the extraction of the meteor face, and then it will mesh. So in the meantime, what I can do is to save this view so that I can use it later on. And then let me come back to uh, my model. And let me isolate this one instead. So let me fit on screen. Here I will do some geometry because I figure out that the solids were not uh, split. It. So let me use the drag option here in order to pick this line. And sorry, scroll it to the top here. Same here, pick this line, this line, and scroll it. Okay. And now I will stitch it or stitch them in order to make sure that it's I have a, a face here. So and you see that while I was editing my geometry, the batch mesh proceeded and and did the mesh. So let's keep it for later on and let's come back on my geometry. Um, what I can do now is to go is to go to my link here and I say that this instance is or this representation I will save as a CAD to OK. And now let me go to uh, the mesh and let me go to scene solids. I will pick these two ones. I will say here that I want five layer for this one and I will click on mesh and now I will go to the exa mesh I will pick this remaining solid then with a quaternary mesh and I will mesh it. And now I can return. And what I can do now is to say that I want this representation to be saved as my user representation. And as I didn't delete it, as I didn't delete my CAD, it this representation contained both my CAD and my FE representation. And then what I can do is to instances sync. And by doing so, my four parts are automatically uh, updated. And then let me come back on my original view. So you remember the first view, this one, instances. So let me retrieve them. Let me find them again on screen. So I had this three one. And I will say that now I want to load the representation from session, which is a crushed 10 millimeter. 
So I will ask for loading them. So here you see my 10 millimeter mesh, which is available. Maybe I would have to clean it to change a little bit my param and criteria files in order to reduce the number of try elements. But once I have this, I can also here in that case pick my three parts and say that I want to uh, think so. Sorry, I have to do it instance by instance. So let me pick this first one. Instance is sync. And same for this one. Instance is sync. And same for this one. Instance is sync. And then I have already provided this mesh plus the this part of the mesh, so then I can focus on the, the other remaining parts. And by starting working with the instance first, and then once the instance mesh, what you can do um, in order to filter either the instance part or the non-instance part is to look for instance true or instead to look for instant false. And that will allow you to quickly retrieve what are your current um, um, part of interest. So here were a few options in order to deal with your model and to quickly mesh several parts of your models.